steel cage matches, ladder matches, strap matches, no matter what the stipulation might be, the success of any and all of these matches hinge on one key idea. And we're breaking it down next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. Go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below. Or if you want to take your participation and your education to the next level, come join my community over on Patreon. There's over 350 exclusive posts just waiting for you to unlock. Be part of our private Discord and get an exclusive video every single week that you'll never see here on the channel. Plus tons more. Memberships start for as little as five bucks. Today, I want to break down a few different concepts all related to stipulation matches. And I mean all stipulation matches. They are as relevant to battle royals as they are to a TLC match as they are to the Ultimate X. But there's one of these key ideas that I think wrestling often gets wrong. And we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about that. But before we get there, just so we're all on the same page, let's break down each of these three concepts. We'll start from the most concrete of them and then work our way toward the one wrestling often gets wrong. For any stipulation match, to earn emotional investment from the audience, or to put it another way, for any stipulation match to get over with the crowd, there are three things which must be front and center in the presentation. And the first of these are the stakes. What are the stakes of the match? What are we fighting for? Is it a championship title belt? Is it for pride? Is it for a chance at vindication? Is it for a contract to be entered into a desirable match? What are the stakes? This has to be front and center in the presentation such that it is crystal clear to the audience what the stakes of the stipulation match are. Generally speaking, pro wrestling is pretty good at conveying the stakes, the first of these three key elements. We have promos in advance to sell the match. We have narrators to commentate the story of the match while it's happening live. We have video packages to help recap anything the audience needs to know. And sometimes the stakes are self-evident. Think of the ladder match Cody and Sammy had for the TNT Championship on AEW. There, the stakes are pretty evident, right? There are two shiny things hanging from the ceiling, and here's a ladder to climb to go and get them. We can probably work out what this match is for, because it's self-evident, but we can't always take that for granted. It has to be crystal clear to the audience. We have to give them a reason to care, and that emotional buy-in comes from making them understand why the wrestlers in the match care. If you're going to have an exploding barbed wire double hell death match, there has to be a really compelling reason for it, and those stakes need to be communicated very clearly to the audience so they have a chance to care. They're not going to care just because you're making more pro wrestling. There's plenty of pro wrestling being made on a worldwide basis every single day. I'm not sure we need any more. So you better give the audience a really compelling reason to care about the wrestling you're making. This second key point is another one I think wrestling tends to do well. You must define the rules of engagement for the viewer. Or another way of saying that is, you must help them understand the complete context of the battleground. Define the rules under which these two people will battle. If you can only win by scaling a ladder and coming down with a briefcase, be explicit in telling the audience you can't win by pinfall. You can't win by submission. You won't be disqualified if you break a guitar over your opponent's head. 
as clearly as you possibly can, define the battle for the viewer. Make it obvious what the rules of engagement are going to be. Okay, let's flip that pancake over for just a second. Let's say you are presenting a match in which the only way to win is to climb out of the steel cage. You can't win by pinfall. You can't win by opening the cage door and walking out. You must climb out of the steel cage. But this isn't clearly explained to the audience. In that case, their confusion as they are figuring out on their own the context of the battle will cost you some of their buy-in. You will lose emotional investment amidst that confusion. That's a price your match will pay for failing to explain the rules of engagement to the audience. There's a reason why even the newest WWE fans out there can probably explain the exact way in which you win the Royal Rumble. Everybody's got to go out over the top rope. Everybody has to have both feet touch the floor. Why is it that everybody knows the rules of the Royal Rumble? Even a relative noob? It's because the WWE is expert at communicating that context to the audience. We've all heard it so many times, we know it without even realizing we've learned it. And because we understand the context of the battleground, because the rules of engagement are clear, we can then enjoy the way that the match is being presented. This is also critical. It's every bit as critical as understanding the stakes, what is being fought for. But there's one more key idea, the main topic that led me to make this exact video that I think wrestling often gets wrong. If you're enjoying today's video, now is a fine time to leave a like a palooza. And help me out with the engagement algorithm, would you? Tell me, what's your favorite kind of stipulation match? Leave it for me down below in the comments right now. Here's the one we gotta talk about, gang. It's the pursuit. It's the drive to the win. Are the combatants attempting to achieve the objective of the stipulation match? And here's a truth about storytelling. When the characters suddenly stop pursuing the objective of the narrative, the audience begins to lose interest, and they are less and less invested with each passing second that they aren't chasing the objective of the story. So what does that look like pulled into a wrestling context? Well, let's say that we define the stakes. We are battling for a championship title belt. And let's say the rules of engagement are also clear. The only way you can win this match is by climbing out of the steel cage and jumping down to the arena floor. When we take a sudden detour from the objective of the match by pausing instead to do a frog splash off of the cage back into the ring on our opponent, we're taking a detour from achieving the objective of the match, right? The only way to win is to climb out of the cage and jump to the floor, not to jump on your opponent. And you already climbed up there. Why are you jumping back in? Just jump out and you win the match. Or a different example, why put the ladder in the corner of the ring when the giant poker chip you need to grab is hanging in the center? This doesn't make any sense. Go get the thing everyone's fighting for. Here's why we have to get the pursuit, the drive to the win, Correct. There's a danger in devaluing the win. And the moment that we take a detour from striving to achieve the objective of a stipulation match, like climb up the ladder, grab the briefcase, and bring it down, we are communicating to the audience that something is now more important than the win. And if we make the mistake of devaluing the win from that moment forward, Everything else in the match will be robbed of the gravitas, the tension, and the drama that it could deliver. We have shown the audience now something is more important, and that something might be doing a cool move off of the ladder. But if that is the detour that prevents your drive to win, that off-roads the pursuit, that stops you from achieving the objective of the match, it becomes 
more important than the win. And then everything else, the stakes of the match and everything else just slide into the back seat. They are no longer as important as whatever the flashy spot is that will end up as an animated GIF on Monday morning. And yeah, that is dangerous because if you had emotional buy-in from the audience up until that moment, you have sacrificed all of it on the altar of a pop. And this mistake is more rampant now in the social media era of professional wrestling than ever before. You remember Arkham City, right? It was like the best-selling video game of 2011. And it does correlate directly to what we're talking about here, in addition to which you know I'm gonna shoehorn in a Batman reference anywhere I can until we make it. In that video game, there are more than 400 detours from the main path of the game. They make up this complete side mission story featuring the Riddler. And you could complete all 400 plus of these, but you won't win the game. They have nothing to do with the main objective of stopping Protocol 10 from destroying all of Gotham City. To do these side missions is to stop pursuing the objective of the game. It ceases your drive to win. And yeah, the side missions, they might be fun, but ultimately they are a distraction from the main objective of the game. And so to pull that back into wrestling for a second, if you take the time to get the audience to fully understand the rules of engagement and to care about what's at stake in the match, but then, rather than drive relentlessly toward that objective, you decide to take a fun little side mission and do a moonsault off the ladder onto a pile of dudes, I think the audience is going to be told the finish doesn't really matter. The moment you stop fervently and directly pursuing the objective of the match, you tell them that winning is not the primary concern. Let's use Money in the Bank as an example. Let's say I am climbing up the ladder to grab the briefcase and bring it down, but instead I stop at the top of the ladder and moonsault onto a pile of people. What I've just told the audience in that moment is that getting my moonsault in there is of higher priority than winning the match. I not only devalue the win, but also this occurs. The new priority in the match are cool moves. That's what we're telling the audience to react to. Not the win, where all the drama and the tension had been focused before, because that's been devalued. We threw that out when we said to the audience, I am less concerned with that than performing my whatever. And this negates the purpose of stipulation matches no matter what they are. Because if the priority is just doing your cool moves, you know what other kinds of matches can also feature cool moves? Any match, any basic one-on-one -on -one wrestling match could have a cool move in it. Not only do we end up negating the value, the specialness of a stipulation match, we also tell the audience that winning is irrelevant. So whether you're escaping from a steel cage or dragging the opponent you are handcuffed to to all four turnbuckles, or throwing out the last remaining opponent in the Royal Rumble to clear yourself a path to WrestleMania, if you've taken a detour from the main objective, if you've been off having your fun little side mission, don't be surprised if that cost you reaction at the finish. Yeah, when I unhook that briefcase in the Money in the Bank match and bring it back down, can I expect some reaction from the audience? Yeah, of course. They are trained to react when they hear the closing bell. But it will have nowhere near the impact, nowhere near the gravitas if I had pursued the objective of the match with all of my talents and abilities and cleverness as I could have possibly mustered under those conditions. If I explain what the stakes are and the rules of engagement that define the battleground, my responsibility to my audience, if I care at all about the story I am crafting, is to drive relentlessly toward the objective with everything that I've got. And yeah, that fun little side mission might result in some shareable content that makes the round for 48 hours, but it does not contribute to the kinds of performances we think of as epic matches. You may know that structuring matches and angles and whole wrestling cards is a giant chunk of my book, Toolbox Building Better Pro Wrestling. There's an audiobook version I narrate myself on Audible, 
and there are also print and digital copies available from the people over at Amazon.com. Grab one today. If you're ready to start binging more videos all about wrestling psychology and structure, I've got a whole playlist of exactly those things appearing on screen right now. You're also likely to be seeing a Patreon link. It's like a little orange box with a P in it. It's going to take you right to my Patreon.